Dun, 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 dun. We had our first 10. <laughs> that was amazing. She didn't look like a celebrity skating. I know. She she looked like a skater. When they set off, boom shakalaka. You're having let's a just, moment, aren't let's you? Let's just think about Ryan and those hot pants. This is a podcast. We can't just sit here and think. <laughs> <laughs> loved, 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 loved it. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Icebreakers podcast. I am Matt Ever, sat alongside the beautiful Frankie Seaman, looking very smart tonight. Thank you. The 90s called. They want their outfit back. I was going to say the 90s or Joan Collins. All, look, all of the above. You look amazing. It was Guilty Pleasures Week this week on Dancing on Ice. And oh my God, what a show. The quarterfinals, if we want to call it that, right? Week seven, quarterfinals, team challenge, guilty pleasures, all of the above. Let's go. What, so before we get into that, what was your guilty pleasure? Well, obviously my guilty pleasure this week was shopping. And as you can see, <laughs> if, I fully if you're indulged. <laughs> I fully indulged. What about yours? Um, I have to say a little bit like athleisure if we want to call it that well you do love lounging around i do <laughs> i do like to lo lounge around but i think too like being from california and in los angeles it is that's what everybody wears like there is no dress code anymore like you can go to a really really nice restaurant in like your yoga clothes well i'm kind of disappointed you didn't bring the chocolate pudding but okay i like your <laughs> athleisure wear let's i couldn't find a chocolate pudding costume <laughs> If you listened last week or watched last week, that was what I said I was going to do. But you didn't bring Britney. I totally brought Britney. I, I look like more like Britney than Britney does. <laughs> Literally. I don't get it. Now, elephant in the room. Well, mm. actually, the caterpillar in the room. If you are watching us, you are going to notice that we have a little caterpillar on our table here because it was our producer Jen's birthday. Happy ha birthday, Jen. Happy birthday, Jen. A little bit louder so they can hear you at home. <laughs> <laughs> She's enthusiastic. Week seven, quarterfinals, team challenge, guilty pleasures, Jen's birthday. <laughs> exactly. Boom. Now, tonight's show, there were new lifts. There was the first 10, and there wasn't just one. There was loads of them. Um, there were tears. There was laughter. We didn't have Ashley Banjo again. We had the gorgeous Johnny Weir one more time. Of course, this week he was channeling Cruella de Vil, Edward Scissorhands. We're going to get into that later because there was so much chatter on social media about his Oh, I his can look only tonight. imagine. But um, we also, somebody who was lost has been found, and we saw the birth of a skater tonight. It was actually a really beautiful moment. I 100% agree. So without further ado, the team challenge. Come on now. <sighs> we discussed this last week, the team challenge. And we will get into this in the order of the show. However, the way that they explained it at the beginning of the show tonight with the VT didn't explain it at all. Completely lost on me. I had no idea who were the team leader. I didn't know who were in the teams. I didn't know how it worked. Why couldn't we have had Holly and Steven on their amazing podiums? Just run through that for us. A little bit, or at least have a VT sort of explain how it was going to work because the entire show, I was like, well, wait, how is this performance going to affect the other performance? And then the leaderboard and all of that, it just wasn't explained very well. No, I agree. So apparently there were extra points up for grabs. Didn't understand that either until later in the show. Uh, Steven said it was a night of danger. I personally was a little bit confused by some of tonight's performances. We'll get into it. Let's go with couple one. Couple one, Eddie and Vicky. I'm so sad. So spoiler alert, Eddie and Vicky went home tonight. Uh, they skated to One Direction. That's what makes you beautiful. That yep. was Eddie's guilty pleasure. Who knew that Eddie was a singer? He's uh, been to Finland. He's had a number two single. I know, right? Like, again, what can this man not do? So far, he's done pretty much everything in life. And I loved it. I mean, I couldn't understand the lyrics of the, the song that charted at number two in Finland, but it sounded fun. Maybe we could call our friend Alexandra Schaumann. She's fluent in Finnish. Apparently, I'm not even fluent in English. So we can, <laughs> we can ask her what it said. Um, skating wise. Okay. This number opened the show. And again, we as we've discussed week after week after week, that first spot can be really nerve wracking. I feel he handled it quite well. Look, we have said week after week that Eddie is a brilliant skater. He's strong. He's got amazing skills. He's fearless. But I have said for the last few weeks he's plateaued, and I don't think that's his fault. I feel like he hasn't been pushed. I feel like he hasn't been choreographed to his strengths. 
this week was really not much different. He didn't bring a lot more to the ice. Of course, he had amazing skating. He had brilliant jumps. We know that. They were in the black and red. He started all by himself in the tunnel, which was, I thought was a, a decent start. Obviously, he had those kind of awkward back, almost cross rolls. I don't know what they were. Yeah. Again, that could have been picked up in the choreography. He did that huge knee slide. I was like, woo, yep. fire. That's going to burn tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, technically speaking, like you said, the skating is there. And we've seen that since week one with him, but he has lacked the progression that we are seeing with the other one. So like he's kind of getting left behind. And what we saw tonight in this performance with the three jumps. So it's the sort of the first jump that you learn in ice skating, skating forwards, jumping to backwards, taking off and landing on one foot. You do change feet in the air. Um, he had two of those, which were solid as a rock. Um, he spanned both ways. Yeah. Which was incredible. I mean, Normal, I struggle to spin both ways. I was going to say, professional skaters sometimes don't. I mean, you can do sort of a, a remedial spin both directions, but to make it look good is difficult. Everybody has a natural turning direction. Um, you'll see it with dancers. They typically only turn one direction. And with skating, if primarily if you're left-handed, you'll spin one direction. And if you're right-handed, you'll spin the other way. But he came out here tonight and showed us that he can spin both ways, which I thought was awesome. I don't know if we've seen that ever before on Dancing on Ice. I'd be surprised. Were you just trying to mention One Direction, One Direction, One Direction? Because that's what they skated to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just like it. Christopher Dean. Subliminal messaging. Um, I felt, though, that the movements tonight were just a little bit short. Um, and I, I think the judges kind of missed out on that a little bit. They didn't really critique the elements. I shouldn't say the elements, but they didn't really critique sort of the technical aspect of what this performance was. They just had said, you know, we want to see you improve these edges. And I don't know if you guys follow him on social media, but all week long, they kept showcasing how much he was working on the edges. And I disagree with Johnny 100%. His edges are great. I don't get what they're, I don't understand what they're talking about. I completely disagree with Johnny as well, aka Cruella de Vil. <laughs> Look at that beehive hairstyle. Boom. <laughs> All my hairstyle fantasies coming true. That I think there was like, I heard a meow from inside that hairstyle at one point. There was <laughs> definitely there was definitely an owl in there. Anyway, I disagree with Johnny as well. He wanted to see him ease into his edges. They were the words that he used. Ease into his edges. I mean, Eddie has always, from day one, had amazing skating skills. So I don't know what he was looking at. Christopher Dean said he hoped to see him in the semifinal. But I wrote down that he was in trouble this week and he lacked a little sparkle for me. Mm, a little bit, yeah. I can see that. Now the I, judges... Oh, go ahead. Well, I just love that Eddie's always been such an entertaining figure and this week I felt that that's been stripped away from him somewhat. A little bit. No, okay. I see what you're saying there. And yeah, I agree with that. It just didn't have the sparkle tonight. Something was, something was off. But the judges said they liked the entertainment value. Probably in general, okay. right? He has, he has been one of the most entertaining on the series so far tonight but not tonight I, no i don't think it was it wasn't it wasn't working tonight i lost a little shine tonight um judges scored him eights and 8.5s across the board a total of 33.5 again that that landed him after everybody skated last on the leaderboard and as you mentioned spoiler alert um he went home tonight he was in the skate off which we'll talk about because there's a t bit of a twist when it comes to that because he rocked that skate off yeah, he did. Yeah. He was really good in that. However, his whole uh, VT and him chatting about his finished single and the single that he had in the UK charts as well segued really smoothly into Jane and Chris's Australian album that they had produced or directed. Oh, I don't know, sang. They, I can't believe they sang on it. They sang on it. No way. So we did an Australian series before Dancing and Ice 1 and Dancing and Ice 2. We went down to Australia and it was me and Christina Lenko who went with Jane and Chris down there and it resurfaced when we were down there. So I, I had already seen and heard it and I've seen the video too. Whoa. That's where you met Maria Filipov. That is correct. Yeah. Yeah. Love her. Um, the video is interesting. Uh, no, Please. you need to elaborate. Interesting how. It's, I mean, it's proper like 80s, the... You should, I've got to find it. I've got to find it. If anybody is listening or watching and you have it or know where to find it, please tag us in it because it's, I see it's it. classic. It's pretty amazing. Amazing. 
All right, there was a lot of confusion tonight on social media. Just I on was, my face. Just a lot of confusion on my face. I was stuck to Twitter or X pretty much the whole show because I was confused about some things too because they I didn't feel like they were explaining things. But when we talk about the skating in these couples, especially when if you're confused at home about how they're scoring them or you don't quite understand what they mean by um, solo skating and things like that, obviously that's why we are here for you. <laughs> but the biggest thing for me is I always watch how they skate out from the tunnel and how they leave the judges stand and then skate back into the tunnel. Very telling. It shows so much. And I think, you know, as you said a couple podcasts ago, you can tell if they're nervous, you can tell if they've had a bad week. And then as well, when they leave the ice, it's just watch how they stand. And if they look comfortable, that means that they, they've kind of understood the assignment. And a lot of times they don't look comfortable. Yeah, I guess now though we're getting to the point where we've really gotten rid of the half of the skaters that were probably the weaker half mm -hmm. that could have gone early. And now we're into the section where all of the skaters now are potential contenders for the final um, and potential contenders for the championship, really, depending on how they progress in the next few weeks. I feel like we've got a really strong um, crew. So what we will see on that skate on and skate off when they enter the rink and they exit the rink is we'll see their emotional journey as well. We'll be able to see behind their eyes and we'll be able to see how they're feeling about this performance that they're about to do. Are they nervous? Um, are they shaky? Are they bang up for it? Mm -hmm. But we'll also be able to see when they've had their judges' comments if that leaves them deflated yeah, or emotional. Absolutely. Now, somebody who didn't lack confidence after their performance last week, Miles and Vanessa Bauer skated second to Jeannie in a Bottle by Christina Aguilera. Boom. Again. The 90s called. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, again, he just... He uh, he looks like a nice dancer. Yeah. I, I have to, again, applaud Vanessa Bauer on her choreography. Like, she's really, I mean, she's always understood the assignment, at least for the past three or four series. And I think, too, as you called it a couple of weeks ago, she needs to start choreographing for them and not for herself. Because tonight, I really thought that they worked, like last week, as a team. Yeah, they were much better. I think this whole assignment for them had a little bit of a cheesiness to it, a cheekiness to it. And I, I think they nailed it, actually, 100%. So we saw a lot of falls tonight. It was high risk, as we saw during their VT, during the training week. Um, and I think because it was so high risk, this number for me was a bit of a number of two halves. Okay. In regards to? So I felt like they came out at the beginning and they were really strong. You're right, the choreography was great. They were really in tune with each other. I felt like Miles was really going for it for the first half. And then I feel like after the aeroplane, which was a spin that they did, where, where Vanessa is off the ice completely, they had a little bit of a... Um, it's a poor technique anyway in the aeroplane spin. It needs fixing because it's not right. They had a little bit of like a dizzy moment when they came out. Then he, I think you said, he forgot the routine it or something happened. It looked like happened. he forgot because you can always tell when the celeb goes deer in the headlights, looks at their pro, Checks either out. male or female, and the pro starts speaking. If you see the pro's mouth move, it typically means she's giving him cues or what's next, what's next, what's next. And it kind of looked like that happened. Yeah, I feel like the first half of the routine, I would definitely give them the nines, uh, the 9.5s that they were awarded. The second half of the routine for me was more like an 8.5. And because of that moment of whatever happened, they were a little bit out of sync, probably for the next 20 to 30 seconds. And at that point, Vanessa, if you're listening, just keep your eyes on him because you can always kind of hide some of that sometimes. However, I wanted more passion with this. Yeah. I needed that like in each other's faces. I almost wanted to see their lips almost touch at some point. Cause the wow. song, well, it needed it, right? Yeah, yeah. And I think too, coming from the, what the judges mentioned, as far as he be, he's becoming a little bit one dimensional. There isn't a lot of emotion with the face. He's nailing it in his body. Well, Christopher Dean said that he wants to see light and shade in his expression. And I think that's where you're coming from is yeah. that you need to see more of that. He's such a kind of happy go lucky guy and a smiley guy. Yeah. And you're right. I think he needs to find a little bit more of that. We have seen him touch on that in previous routines in previous weeks. But I feel like this week, once the second half went, once he lost that second half, I feel like they were just scrambling then to make it through. Mm, for but sure. But they covered it well. They covered it. Well, no, I mean, I, I'm totally nitpicking this, but I... For me to have one of those wow moments, which we had two others, which we'll get into a little bit later on tonight's show, I just felt like I just needed a little bit more character, not characterization, that's not the right word. I needed more passion in his face. Wow. Okay. Well, if you're listening, Miles, beef it up, boy. <laughs> <laughs> 
Where's the beef? Um, speaking of judges, I loved Odie's comment. Their transitions, she said, were flowing, and it was like this the perfect song. Well, we saw them last week, and they looked like ice dancers. Yeah. I mean, they've got that going on, and they've nailed that, and I feel like that's just going to get stronger and stronger. But they're going to need to work a little bit on those tricks. They make me nervous. Um, he did take his direction really well. I think I mentioned that he needed to get his feet underneath him when he's doing his rotations, and I thought that went really well. But now on his airplane, and that's when he's rotating across the ice. But with this, movement, yeah. With movement. But this week on his aeroplane, which is a, a spin that stays on one spot, uh, and he takes Vanessa off the ice, he's leaning forwards. They look really shaky, and actually it makes me nervous that an accident could happen. It doesn't make me confident that they can then go on and transition into a headbanger, or as we would call it, a bounce spin. And from the professional side of what Frankie is meaning by looking shaky, it's his weight looks like it's a little bit too far forward in that spin. And when you as the male are spinning a girl around, you want your weight just a little bit back from center um, so that her weight doesn't throw you off your feet. You want the center of the spin to be in between yourself and your partner. Um, you don't want to be the center of the spin. Correct. Uh, judges scored them. Uh, Johnny gave him a nine. Odie, Jane, and Chris gave them 9.5s, uh, 37.5, which uh, before the team challenge um, left them uh, third place. And where did it leave them after the team challenge? Fourth place. Oh. So a little there bit was of a shimmy, shimmy, sh a little bit shaky of a, pops there. A little shimmy shake up there. Uh, but overall, again, keep doing what you're doing, Miles. Just give us a little bit more face. Speaking of face. Good God. Can we just talk oh. about this VT? Wow. The, you broke out into a sweat. I'm still sweating from it. Okay, Ryan and Amani skating to Wham. Just stop. Just stop. You're let's having a just, moment, aren't let's you? Let's just think about Ryan and those hot pants. This is a podcast. We can't just sit here and think. <laughs> <laughs> World's most boring pod. I just need to sit here and think for a minute. No. <laughs> Very true. I need to articulate Ryan, Armani, Wham. Spit it out. Club Tropicana channeling all of my George Michael fantasies in your gold hot pants. Damn, I didn't know Ryan had that underneath his outfit. What, why hasn't he been skating topless every week, people? Oh, right. Um, the VT was very gratuitous, um, possibly a little bit much for before the watershed. Which, oh, I forgot about that. But we Are will... you talking about the zoom in close upon the old pet? The pecs, the pecs, or can we say nipple? We can I, say nipples. Well, I guess we can. Nipples, nipples, nipples. <laughs> <laughs> that, I think, has just pushed you over the edge. <laughs> You've gone. Ryan and those super slow-mos of him in the tanning booth all day. Thank you very much. Um, yep. Who knew, though, right? Well, he started on a lilo, so we knew this was going to be fun, Oh, cheesy. have you moved on to the performance? Oh, sorry. Are you still, are you still talking about how he looks? still at the pool. <laughs> You're still in the tanning booth, aren't yes. you? No, on the performance, he started on a lilo. So we knew it was going to be fun. It was going to be cheesy. It was going to be super camp. A bit like me, to be honest. Self-indulgent. <laughs> Thank you. It's my, I am my own guilty pleasure. Oh, my God. <laughs> Did you see his hitch kick, by the way? <clears throat> well, Let let's explain this. Okay. Okay, so it may not look like a lot on television where the skater does kind of like a kick. It's almost like a air. hop. It's almost like a hop. However, the free foot or the foot that's in the air um, should go above the hip. And depending upon how flexible you are, it can go up to the shoulder height. Well, not in those gold hop pants. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> but Ryan did a hitch kick. I know. I have not seen a hitch kick from a celebrity in years. I don't know if I've ever seen one. How possible? I mean, yeah. Maybe Ray Quinn, maybe Chris. No, I don't think Chris did one. Chris Fountain. Ray Quinn probably probably did, did one. It is a very difficult trick. It is unassisted. You Ray are on Quinn your own. Ray Quinn didn't do one in gold hop hunts. No, he did not. Um, however, ah, just before they went into the tabletop or the platter lift, uh, which some of you, of you might know as like the dirty dancing lift, he hit his toe pick I <laughs> and I thought he was going to stack it. So did I. And I was like, no, this could, this is making out to be like an iconic performance of dance on ice and then that happened but it was a, he was fine it was a heart in mouth moment yeah uh but then they went on to do the lift they kind of missed the lift i think that had thrown him a little bit they they almost got it to the top and then brought it straight back down it wasn't quite in the right place his hands weren't in the right place 
on a platter lift or a dent, dirty dancing lift, you need to make a W and you need to make sure... That with the, your thumbs. With your thumbs, sorry. You need to make a W with your thumbs and make sure that the girl is fully supported. Um, and I felt like he almost just tried to grab her around the waist and lift her. And that's usually when it goes wrong. And that's why the lift itself just kind of went up and it came back down. Those lifts typically are extended for a good couple of seconds um, to show that you're in control once the girl is above your head. However, he did a rotational lift with movement as well. It's which like the needle lift which not a lot of celebrity boys are doing yet. Um, and the judges, However, did, the judges did comment on it. I will pick him up on that because technique-wise, Ryan, and I know that you listen, your feet are a little bit too wide for those rotations. So when you want to rotate across the ice, and especially if you're lifting somebody, but e equally if you're skating by yourself, you must get your feet underneath your hips, underneath your shoulders. At the moment, your feet are wider than your hips. And so at that point, you start to get, uh, the, the rotations will come to a standstill. You start to get very stationary. You start to get your weight shifting from side to side. So you really need to bring those feet underneath you, keep your thighs nice and tight in those gold hot pants. I love tight thighs. <sighs> we know. <laughs> <laughs> um, judges scored him an eight point. No, 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 no. Oh, what? I hadn't finished with the tricks. This, this routine was full of content from start to finish the solid backflip that he did and they didn't call it that the um, when they went to the rewind which i thought was a little unkind he actually dipped his head underneath armani's thighs as you clearly like yeah uh, and then she rolled back over his shoulders and then he threw her quite away mm -hmm. um for the backflip and she landed it solid so i was really impressed with their content other than the little and what that thing. demonstrates is that first off he's in control secondly he's on the right part of the blade to be able to do a maneuver like that because that can go horribly wrong when you toss the girl backwards over your head. You can go backwards sometimes too. Well, and also if you don't get the timing right, she can land really, really, really badly. Um, I think he's been watching Chris Fountain and I on YouTube because we used to do that maneuver. And I feel like he's thought, and yeah, I have a bit of that. And they're best friends. They are. Uh, judges whoa, court. Whoa, oh, God, whoa. still more. No, more. Okay. What about the... Hot pants. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what about the end when he threw himself across the ice, slid barebacked, I know. and then swam across the ice like a backstroke? Yeah. What? What? Well, I'm just thinking about the ice burn that he's going to have tomorrow. He's, he's going to be red in the morning. Yeah, he is. That tan is going to be gone, and it's going to be red. Ripped to shreds, but I loved every second of it. Worth it, Ryan. Worth the sacrifice. It was, so, it was camp as tits, and I loved it. What I actually, you know, to be fair, what I loved about this is we got to see sort of like the cheeky side of him, right? It, we've seen him do this emotive piece. We've seen him do like drama. And this was, it felt like him. Yeah, yeah, totally him. 100%. And it, was, I think, it was Manchester all over it. Totally. And I think between he and Amani and, you know, the choreography, they, they absolutely nailed it. So Johnny Weir said that, or should I say, aka Joan Collins. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were Joan Collins tonight. I, I think I've been out Joned by Johnny Weir and his hair. Um, he said that he turned it in when it mattered. Turned it on. That's right. I just spelt it as in right. <laughs> on my digital iPad. I think he iPad. turned a lot of people on. He turned it on when it mattered. Um, but he said that he could see his knees because he was wearing the gold hot pants. Um, <laughs> the knees were very exposed. They were either too straight or too bendy. I was confused by this explanation. Go. Okay. Very confusing because... Because Christopher Dean also mentioned the knees. But Go. then Jane Torval says, <laughs> keep your legs straight. What's going on, people? So bend your knees, straighten your legs. Bend your knees, straight. What What do you want? Okay. So just to recap, Johnny Weir said, bend your knees. Christopher Dean said, bend your knees and don't bounce. Mm -hmm. And then Jane Torval said, keep your legs straight. So what Chris and Johnny mean is that your general skating position needs to have slight knee bend, right? That's how we make things float. That's how we make things look smooth. However, when you do an extension, either before a move or after a move. And an extension is when one of your legs is off the ice. Like typically behind you, like after you've landed a jump. Um, then that needs to be straight. And it's this separation of church and state. It's like doing that tap your head and circle on your belly, which I can't do. And if you're watching us, you can see that I can't do it. <laughs> you're just thinking about this. Go hot pants. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually, I just looked at the cake and I'm like, I kind of want some cake now. Come back for the bonus episode and we will show you the cake. Um, but it is hard for a non-skater and or a non-dancer to understand what it means to bend one knee while straightening the other. Well, and he's bouncing up and down a little bit, which makes him unsteady. So, yeah. I mean, that does make sense in that way. But I think Ryan, like a lot of us, would have skated away from that critique and gone, I don't know 
what to do. It's very confusing. It's a little bit confusing. So yeah. hopefully we've been able to shed a little bit of light on that. Now the scores, Odie, Jane, and Chris gave him nines, and Johnny gave him an 8.5, total of 35.5. I think Johnny's other 0.5 of a score was probably in that wig somewhere. <laughs> gold hot pants. <laughs> All right, moving on from the gold hot pants. Greg and Vanessa James skated fourth to bye, bye, bye. I feel like you're perfectly dressed for this routine. I'm perfectly dressed for the one routine, actually most of the routines tonight, but you have nailed the in-sync routine tonight. I came as a Backstreet Boy, actually. You did. Um, Okay. Lots of falls in training in their VT, which I kind of like to see. I do, because if you're not falling, you're not learning. And Vanessa is really pushing him again, week after week after week. She knows his potential. She can see his potential. And I like that she's not getting complacent with it. Absolutely. Um, The creative... I thought was cool, like I with loved the it. straps, but the strap choreography was just, I didn't bland. get it. Yeah, it was, it was a bit weak. I think with those puppets that they had and with the straps that they had, they could have done some really cool stuff. Well, I think they tried happen. to like intertwine with each other, which yeah. I can understand when you're putting it together, like, oh, this will be cool. It'll be like we're tying, tying a knot with each other and then, then we're not in a knot. Then they ended up like a ball of spaghetti. And then just look like spaghetti because in, in the in sync video, they basically just do like static choreography, arm choreography and stuff. And yeah. that's what I was expecting. Yeah. And maybe it's copyrighted that they can't do that. But um, I was, it just kind of left me a little bit flat. However, However, when they set off, boom shakalaka. I am so excited because we saw things tonight that we have never seen before on Dancing on Ice. Thank you, Greg Rutherford and Vanessa James. Loved, 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 loved it. What did we see that was new? We saw a full split twist. That was huge. I mean, that is a competitive skating move. That's not even a professional skating move. That is a Olympic competitive move. Granted, it was only a single rotation in the Olympics. You'll I see, will take it. Oh, yeah, 100%. In Olympic competition, you'll see double and triple twists where the girl rotates either two or three times. Okay, well, give him a week. <laughs> They've been working on a double twist. I've I, seen I, it on the floor. I can imagine. So fingers crossed it's coming. He was smooth from start to finish. This is what I'm talking about. Greg has consistently, for me, brought it to the table and has consistently, for me, been undermarked. Yeah. And tonight I finally feel like the judges put their glasses on and saw what I've been seeing the whole time. Wake up, people. So I mean, true. honestly, he he gives me goosebumps when he skates like that, when they skate like that together as a couple, because that's how I see them skate. Yeah. I don't see him skating as a celeb. I don't see her compromising for him. I mean, I would You're like... Right. I would like to see her get in sync with him if he gets off Okay, so what you mean by that is in the middle, there was a little moment when they did some crossovers that were not in sync. Yeah. That probably was because the routine was going so well. And even as a professional, you can forget sometimes that you are skating with a novice. Got a little hyper. Got a little bit hyper. So Vanessa, I know you listen, just always keep that little eye on him to be fair it happened so quickly she didn't have quite have time to catch up with him i think so uh but yeah he he also needs to kind because he's so good now i feel like he can also be watching her and making sure that he's doing the same thing every time he's consistent i love that his wife was in the audience and she was like this is so much more exciting than long jumping here here sister (laughs) i love it so another new lift with this team it was so new we didn't even know what to call it we called it the outside puppet because it's that new it actually ended up being called the side levitation lift and I literally am here for all this content. I'm here for this couple. I'm here for the work they're bringing week after week after week. Uh, judges picked up. Jane did pick up on. Also. Oh, yeah. Oh, did you see his little boy band vibes when he was giving it? Oh, yeah. I mean, on the ice. Everything. The, the characterization. Com- the, commitment to, the commitment to the piece was just absolutely brilliant. Um, Jane did pick up the that they were out of unison yeah. for that little, little bit. Um, but she did say she loved the performance. Of course. And... What Johnny loved was that he is attacking, and we're seeing this week after week after week with him. He attacks every performance, and he said it just he just loved that he just skated. Yeah. Right? And OT was nearly out of her seat. She loved it that much. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It just was awesome. Now, scores-wise, dun, 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 we had our first 10. <laughs> that was amazing. <laughs> what a setup, people. I wish I'd screamed a bit louder. Shoot. <laughs> no, if you heard a bang, no, they're, you know, we're, we're all still here. Um, 
we have confetti cannons. So another reason why you should be watching us and not just listening. But it was the first 10, ladies and gentlemen. Johnny and Odie gave them both 10s. First of the series, Jane and Chris, boo, gave them 9s. And that would have been out of the um, the content that was out of sync. Yeah, and that was the only reason why I feel like... Although, and also, it's a bit too early to get full 10s across the board. So True. I feel like Jane and Chris are holding back. But wow, what a skate. And finally, I feel like everybody's on board and they're all seeing what I've been seeing this whole time. Good job you guys amazing job and thank you for giving us our confetti canyons Woo! <laughs> and we'd like to thank our sponsors lakeside shopping center the leading retail and leisure destination in essex just 35 minutes from london with free parking and over 250 stores to discover this week i am the boss because i'm wearing head to toe boss thank you boss amazing and i'm wearing zara Okay, moving on to Amber and Simon. There is a lot to talk about here. All right. There was a lot of controversy on social media over this team and kind of what happened and what didn't happen. We'll get into it. Skating to ABBA, Waterloo. I mean, I like this track, but it's a little bit mid-tempo as well. So it's it a is. tricky one. Um, now, as we saw in the VT before they skated, she was really nervous last week and she talked about it. Um, she and, broke down and she was crying. And I think you hit the nail on the head. She wasn't a victim of a bad performance. She was a victim of a bad VT. Absolutely. That VT brought me down. Yeah. And I was just watching it. So I'm sure it didn't help. Oh, I think this has really pointed out to people that are watching at home how important these storylines are, mm. how each week... Um, a VT can make or break you. And it's not necessarily that you've had a terrible week. It's just if that's what's highlighted those four or five minutes, if that's what they take from your entire week of training, and then you watch that before you go out and skate, actually that can bring you down. And I think we really saw that reflected in her performance last week that she watched the VT, everybody was crying, everybody was upset, still don't know why. Um, and then she brought that to the, to the ice rink with her. Yeah. And then the number one comment from last week was, you're not skating enough on your own. Well, I have been saying this for quite a while. I understand. However, I think sometimes it's like putting the wrong emphasis on the syllable, right? Syllable. <laughs> like putting the B in subtle. Exactly. Like it's a little, it's hard to compare between teams sometimes because. And week to week. And week to week. Because there can be a week where there is a lot of solo skating and they're like, you don't skate enough as a pair. Or as, oh, there's no connection. Or, yeah. And then there's one week when you all you do is, especially like in a waltz, you're not going to leave a waltz hold to go skate off on your own. So then you get criticized that there's not enough solo skating. So that comes down to the creative. Exactly. Now, with this, they tried to marry the two. They tried to make everybody happy. And I think they achieved it. Right? I mean, I thought she had the ultimate bounce back from the skate off last week. I thought she was fast. She was fearless. She had speedy crossovers. And I don't mean that she was speedy across the ice because obviously you could argue that she was being pushed by Simon. I don't agree with that, but you could argue that. However, I meant her feet were fast. Like she was moving. Tempo-wise. Yeah, her footwork was incredible. Um, but I, I thought her footwork was great. I thought there was a lot more fun this week, a lot more freedom to her skating. What I will say, though, is you have just talked about how they don't think Amber skates enough by herself. I have pointed that out for a few weeks. And I think the difference is, yes, it's okay to skate in whole because, yes, it's, it is a skating competition that you skate as a team. As in ice dancing. As in ice dancing. However, I think when we see Adele skating with Mark, we see it more as if they're skating as a partnership. She is skating... Where two in, people are holding their own. Yeah, she's skating as a partner to Mark, whereas sometimes when we watch Amber, she's being assisted by Simon. I think that's the fine line that we need to draw. Okay, and what, how that can be explained and how that can be shown through your performance can be, are you skating by yourself? Because then it shows that you are in control and that you can stand on your own two feet. But to the trained eye, like you and I we can see that sometimes when she's skating in hold, she's leaning forwards and it's Simon that's supporting her. Whereas Correct. we don't typically see that with Adele. We see that she's standing on her own two feet and she's skating side by side with Mark. I thought this performance was flawless. Agree? I loved the energy. The footwork was awesome. She had a throwback to Torval and Dean, which are the Mac and Mabel steps. My one of my favorite routines of theirs. Um, 
the lift that they did at the end, the replay, the commentator said that it was a dancing on ice first, and it wasn't. We have seen that lift before, um, which is a spinning. Maybe sort he of, had never seen it before. Maybe he had never seen it before, but it wasn't. It wasn't for sure. <laughs> We're so a, old; we've seen them all. <laughs> um, but it was. It was foot perfect, and I I loved the energy that she brought to it. I thought, as you just said too, like it was the ultimate bounce back from last week, um, and. The Twitter storm or the X storm, whatever you want to call it, I, I hope that people at home are taking in our notes and sort of trying to understand what the judges are saying here because it, it, it can go both ways and it gets very confusing. But again, we're using that word confusing and that's why we're here to try and wade through all of that mud and get you to a clearer picture. But yes, sometimes the judges messaging can be a little bit can be crossing over and we can be getting a little bit of a mixed message. And not to just the skaters on the ice, but to the people at home, especially. Odie thought that she has the full package. I completely agree. Amber, if if you can just get a little bit stronger on your own, you showed us tonight that you can skate on your own. Now put the confidence behind the technique. You will be the full package here. And Jane really appreciated the fact that she attacked the, this performance. Um, scoring wise, 9.5s. Straight across the board, so the judges were in full agreement uh, for a total of 38. How would you have scored her? Do you know what? I loved this performance. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was really joyful and really celebratory. However, I probably would have given it half a mark less than that. Okay. Yeah. Just because I do spot that she is sometimes being assisted right. by Simon. Fair enough. Fair enough. But well How done. How would you have scored it? Oh, I was going to swiftly move on. Um, <laughs> oh, no. Now you're in the spotlight. I probably picks. I probably actually would have been on par with the judges tonight. 9.5s for sure. Wow. I agreed. I agreed with everything that they said. So what would it have taken for you uh, to get her to a 10? The solo section that she did do, which mm -hmm. was uh, penguin steps, uh, a six step, which is kind of like a there's a mohawk in there. So it's almost a, like a set piece that we do. Right. Um if that would have looked a little bit more confident. And cleaner. But it's a bit scratchy. A little bit, yeah. That's just the weight being a little bit forward. That yeah. comes from coming up out of your knees. I think she is starting to skate with a little bit more of a knee bend, a constant knee bend that we talked about with Ryan. More consistent. Um, I feel that if that would have been a little cleaner and stronger than she would have gotten a 10 from me. Wow, okay. Well, yeah, there you go. Something to aim for. Yes. We still loved it, Amber, so well done. All right, last but not least, Adele and Mark, what? you're my world. What a way to end this show. She was my world tonight. Yeah. Again. Again. I, I was mesmerized by this performance, actually. I think the whole creative behind it, when we started off with a very dark black background with the starlight, her costume was sparkly and shiny, and she just looked like a bronze goddess. It was, well, first off, she had a personal message from the legend that is Jane McDonald. Wow. I mean, as a gay man, I was just like literally shaking in my boots. I loved it. Um, and she loved it. I mean, she got tearful in the VT as well. So I think that was an added boost of confidence for her to go out and just smash this performance, which she did. And Jane McDonald said that she was so proud of her. And actually, I think we all were tonight. Yeah. It was a, a great way to end the show. I don't think it could have been a more perfect performance to close on. And it was an interesting choice. I think on paper, if you go, oh, Jane McDonald singing You're My World, perhaps you wouldn't necessarily think that would be a great finale to end a show on. Correct. But the way they brought that all together and you last week gave Mark Hanretti the note and you said oh well you need to skate more um, as her partner as her partner as opposed to teacher we saw that this week and he actually sent me a message and said thank you for the note he agreed that you know it's easy for us as pros to revert back to what we're comfortable and well, revert back to what we're used to and I think we all feel that Adele is can be very vulnerable obviously she has a vulnerable um health issue that she's dealing with and so I think we all just want to protect her and I know Mark Hamretti obviously he has that about him and his personality anyway yeah so it's probably good for him to get a little note to just say hey snap out of it this performance was perfect Spot it was on. gorgeous it was technically huge um, she did an open mohawk, which I believe was unassisted, or if it wasn't unassisted, she only had one hand. Now, what this means to you guys at home, this is a very, very difficult way to turn from forwards to backwards. It works almost sideways where the blades don't work sideways. So you have to be foot perfect in order to execute an open mohawk. No, no, I'm going to stop you. It's a, a, it's a closed mohawk. Let me get this right. It's a closed mohawk, not yes. an open mohawk. Apologies. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I knew what you meant. Close Mohawks. I always get them mixed up too. It's because we're not ice dancers. We're I pair am. skaters. 
I did ice dance, but did I just, you? I'm just old now. Show me your twizzle. My twizzle. Okay. She didn't look like a celebrity skating. I know. She, she looked like a skater. I have said this since I saw her skate to The Matrix. I mean, that for me has been my standout performance of this entire series. Her skating to The Matrix, ever since then, I've been like, go on, girl. I've been tipping her for the top. I mean, she's really coming into her own week on week on week. And she's pushing herself. Mm -hmm. She's not just standing still and saying, hey, I've got this in the bag. I'm comfortable. Everybody else needs to catch me. She's saying, actually, I'm going to push myself harder. Now you guys better stop running. The interesting thing is halfway through the performance, I remember saying out loud i was like girl just don't fall just keep, keep standing up i shouldn't be thinking that yeah right i should just be when it is this good and i think that's probably because of some of the history that we have with ryan some of the history that we have with amber i think you need to take your own note that you gave to mark hametti last I do. week and you're just, absolutely right and just enjoy it i need to now adele has shown us the consistency is there week after week and i need to just now enjoy this as a entertainment performance and a partnership yeah christopher dean and jane torval both gave her a 10 and she was emotional where's the confetti cannons for adele's 10 oh we peaked too soon <laughs> no it was only for the first 10 <laughs> so yes unfortunately she she did because she closed the show her 10s yeah. came later we got no confetti so sorry adele however she was so emotional after her skate she broke down and actually we i always feel like she's a very strong woman mm. i mean the things that she's gone through they've they've carved into her body they've given her a stoma bag she's been to hell and back yeah. and yet this is what made her break down getting a 10 on dancing on ice and you know why why because she's a super fan of the show. She's always loved this show. It was her dream to be on this show. She worked that. I actually helped her through her recovery. She was running up those steps. I think we talked about this before, yeah. Ali Pale. She was getting to the top. She was envisaging the cancer leaving her body, and she was envisaging her, her taking part in Dancing on Ice. And now she's here, and now she's got a 10. I've got goosebumps on my legs. You can't tell because I'm wearing tights. Boom. I mean, it's just the ultimate manifestation. Wow. Right? Put that out into the world, and back it comes. Not only through surviving cancer, but just all of us have so much to learn from her. Um, you said it last week. You just want Adele around for the motivation, for the positivity that she brings. And I think we're seeing the in front of our eyes, we are seeing the fruits of labor. Yeah. And it's beautiful. Well, thank goodness Mark was there to grab the mic and speak because she was speechless. She was sobbing. Her partner, Kate Holderness, was crying. Uh, it was a really, really emotional moment. Mm. Totes emotion. I have to say this probably is going to be the standout moment for me of this entire series. I mean, yeah. granted, we still have two weeks left. Um, but again, I think, you know, as we've seen historically through through the series of 16, there are these moments that happen mid-series-ish yeah. that really stand out. And I think we saw the birth of an ice skater today. And it was, yeah, it was, it was amazing. Mark Hanretti said that everything about Adele blows our minds. Here, here, Mark. I'm yeah. here for it. Scores wise. Who cares? Who cares? Yeah. You know what? Just who enjoy cares? it. Nine, nine point fives and tens, but you know what? Who cares? Johnny Weir, a.k.a. Madam Butterfly, said... <laughs> You've now given him six names. I mean, I just don't know what to do with him and his big hair. He's like hairspray. <laughs> what did he say? He said that she had velvety skating and that she is the strongest skater in the camp. I mean, that's alliteration for you. The strongest skater in the camp. And I agree with him. Yeah. It's beautiful. Well done, Adele. Again. Okay, I loved it, but we need to talk about Magic Mike. <laughs> We really need to talk about Magic Mike we because Magic everybody Mike. was talking about it on social media. I bet they were. So I'm going to pull out my phone. I feel like my eyes have just been popped open since we saw Magic Mike. Because the performance. This, this was my guilty pleasure. So the cast members of Magic Mike from the West End did the competition. I mean, it would have been oh, too bad I couldn't have done this week or they couldn't have done last week and I could have done Magic Mike with them. Babe, <laughs> if you'd have seen Ryan and his gold hot pants and magic mike in their topless shirts, i would have just self-combusted you would have just melted into a puddle i would have melted the ice Literally. no i would have become one with the ice um so magic mike on dancing on ice very interesting because i looked at the clock and it was 7 20 yeah it was a right? little early it was a, it's a little bit early um it's a little bit early i'm to, just gonna go to through lose your hair somebody some of these um tweets x's whatever you want to call it um 
This person says, I'm going to sound like a right prude, but is Magic Mike performing the right type of mid-show entertainment for Dancing on Ice? I mean, it was a little grabby. Mary Whitehouse is spinning in her grave. Oh, listen, we used to pride, this show used to pride itself on the fact that you could watch it with any member of the family in any combination. So granny could watch it with grandkids, father could watch it with daughter, nobody would be embarrassed. And this kind of just crossed a little line for me. Do you know what? I loved it. Look, I'm here for it. Oh, yeah. But there was a little bit. But I would have been worried if I was sat with kids yeah. watching it. It was a little bit Trying grabby. to have to explain. All right, so I'm not going to name check these people because we didn't ask them. But this person did say, hilarious. I'm not too familiar with Magic Mike, but I'm guessing he's not a magician. <laughs> <laughs> Abracadabra. Where did my clothes go? <laughs> and let let me make them return. Uh, there were yeah, there was no I mean, you know pulling holy a bunny moly, out of your hat. Hot flushes for every single menopausal woman out there. Okay. Yeah. So yes, if you were watching with your kids, uh, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> Put it on rewind. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Team challenge. Team challenge. There's a lot to unpack here. Okay. Miles, Amber, and Eddie were in one team, and Miles was the team captain. Is yep. that right? Correct. Correct me if I'm wrong. Then Ryan, Adele, and Greg were in the second team, and Adele was the team captain. Correct. Both of the team captains were chosen because last week they were top of the leaderboard. Correct. Okay. So I'm I'm got it. I've got it up to this point. Okay. So I want to break down what we were watching and what we should have been looking for. All right. So what we're watching is two groups of people skate together. Yes, they're kind of judged upon individually. How the did they decide who was in whose team? Did Miles get to pick? Did Adele get to pick? Or was it out of a hat? Like what happened? Jane and Chris picked. Oh. There's only two women left, so they split those up. And then I guess between Greg and Eddie, Eddie. they just possibly pulled out of a hat. I don't know. I wasn't there for that. But that's what was projected to us from the VT. Um, they are, they were going to be judged as a team and that means how in sync they were with each other. Um, what sort of tricks they brought to the table, what tricks they brought to the table, um, the energy as they are. Cause it's one thing to skate with just your professional, but then it's another thing to skate with four other people on the ice. I hate doing that. You hated it. I didn't like skate. It made me very nervous because I know what my celebrity is going to do at any given moment. I have my eye on them at every single second of the day. So I know if they're going to fall, I can kind of almost telepathically decide when they feel a bit dodgy, when they're checking out. I know all of that. Now you put two more celebrities on the ice and I have no idea what they're going to do. Yeah. And can you wipe out at any minute? Yeah. Can you take me out? Yeah. Can you take my celeb out? Yeah. There's a lot of variables here. I didn't like it. And as well, if you think about the week during training, they had an extra per, uh, performance to rehearse. So now they're tired, they're fatigued, their brain's fried. Not a fan. Right. Um, so Miles Recipe is, for disaster. Possibly. Well, thank God it wasn't. Miles' team, the mods, went first. He was a great team captain. He was bringing chocolate croissants in every day. I <laughs> because he's be French. Mal I want to be in Miles' team. <laughs> um, however, the performance itself, it was a little, it was out of sync. Oof. I'm just going to call Oof. a spade a spade. It was yeah. out of sync. Adele's team skated second. They were the rockers because the whole theme was mods and rockers. Mm -hmm. um, but from the tunnel, from the moment they skated out, the energy was already better. Yeah, they were, were a lot more in sync. Uh, they had nice tricks. Those airplanes where all three of them were spinning at the same time across the ice. That was a great shot as the camera panned through. Um, I did think that Miles' team had nice tricks as well, but they were all mismatched. So they yeah. did different tricks, which probably reflected um, in their capabilities. I'm not sure. But do you, uh, do you think, sorry to interrupt, do you think like skating first and or second would have an effect on the energy in this scenario, or just your personal opinion? So we know that the team challenge presents its own difficulties because yeah. if you've just skated and then you've got to go into hair and makeup and change your clothes, you're hot, you're sweaty, you're dehydrated, you're coming down from that adrenaline rush, um, you're breathing, your heart's going, and now yeah. you've got to go back out while you're still running around trying to get yourself ready onto the team challenge, skate again without even having much time to prepare. So I think if you went out first, yeah, you probably feel a bit more rushed and maybe that's why we saw that in that rougher performance. Because even though the uh, Adele's team who skated second would still have some quick changes backstage as well, they would have had a good two minutes at least of a chill of chill time yeah to just calm so, down and you know maybe that maybe that did have some sort of effect on it i mean i don't think there was much between it to be honest all right you, you had to pick one team i probably would have picked adele's team was there a lot in it no did i feel like team challenge brings lots of table not particularly they gained one point 
Did we see a lot of change in the leaderboard? Talk me through it. We didn't. Well, then. Holly mentioned that this, you know, shook up the leaderboard a lot, which it really didn't. You know, between Ryan, Adele, and Greg, they only were added in one extra point to their total score. Um, so where Greg and Amber were tied for second, this basically just broke the tie. So team <laughs> challenge, see you later. See you later. Okay. Well, we did end that. We didn't talk about Stephen Mulhern's abs on display. Full display. Everybody literally tonight was topless. Magic Mike was topless. Ryan was topless. Stephen Mulhern was topless. Were those topless. his real abs? I mean, who else's could they be? It was a deep fake. Maybe it was deep fake. <laughs> I mean, Damn. Stephen, you've been hiding that from us. Woof. I did not expect They were that amazing. At all. I told you he liked magic tricks. <laughs> so news just did apparently Stephen Mulhern's suit was fake, deep fake. Was it? Apparently, oh. but I literally want to borrow it. I mean, could you <laughs> walk around Lakeside Shopping Center with that? <laughs> literally, abs out. It would come down to your knees, first <laughs> off. <laughs> she hasn't aged well. <laughs> oh my god! Look at my six pack down to my knees. <laughs> that is midlife goals. <laughs> the skate off controversy. Bam, bam, bam. Not only did we say it when we were here with how the results went, however, again, social media exploded well i love that people are getting involved in the conversation i enjoy that and i like that you go on there and you see what people are talking about because it actually kind of validates our opinions yeah for sure so basically talk me through eddie's performance i mean eddie and vicky had a lovely skate off we haven't seen that routine before it's the first time he's been in the skate off and from the moment the music started vicky looked stunning in that silver dress he looked the part, and when the music started, it was Elton John, and I, I really, really enjoyed it. He skated with conviction. He did. He did a half axle. He did a spin. He did a six step, which we've talked about before. It's a step sequence that's kind of like a set piece uh, that, that skaters know. Um, he, he looked a, a little bit shaky, but it's his first time in the skate off. I think we can forgive that because he's such a strong skater anyway. I really enjoyed his skate. Then Amber skate off. It was funny because you had said, oh, a new routine. I know. I thought it was because she came out with such conviction. Yeah. She performed this last week in last week's skate off as well. And she was emotional. She was emotional. And she was shocked week. that she was in the skate off. And I think that showed from the start she wasn't as fully convicted. This week, she came out like a bullet from a gun. Yes. Fire. Now, the whole way through, I was like, she's got this. She's got this. She's got this. It was foot perfect. And then they came out of their last little spinny lift thingy. Ooh. And there was a bit of a fumble. There was a bit of a... She was dizzy. She was dizzy, but also, again, your adrenaline rush, if you don't hang on to the last minute, you know, things can go wrong. And, and sometimes celebs, when they know that they've skated a full routine perfectly, they can become a victim of celebrating too soon. Yeah. She didn't plant her feet. She didn't finish that off for us. She stumbled. Yeah. She caught herself. She stumbled again. And I think she stumbled a third time. And then what happened was, is we didn't see it on camera, but Holly or Steven alluded to the fact of why did you make that face? What did you say to the judges as they were skating over to the kiss because and cry? Because she knew. Because she knew. And then in the little speech that she gave, she did, she kind of confessed and kind of gave, not, I don't want to say gave up, but she was like, well, you know, whoever's the rightful person to go home. She, you know. gave, a, she gave us a goodbye speech. Yeah. Which was very interesting. I haven't seen that in a while. Like, and again... Don't give up until the fat judges have made their decision. Sing. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you're not referring to me. <gasps> no, of course so, not. So, I mean, I think she knew that she'd kind of thrown away her opportunity in that final two or three seconds. Yeah. Uh, I feel like Eddie skated pretty much foot perfect. He, he did. was a little shaky, but I didn't see him make any mistakes. Yeah. To clear up a lot of communication that was floating around social media. There is not a, there's not written rules with Dancing on Ice and what happens in the skate off. It's subjective. It is subjective, just like normal competition, right? Um, what we've seen in the past is if you fall or make a mistake in the skate off, nine times out of 10, that person does get sent home. She didn't fall. She didn't fall. She had a little bit of a stumble coming out of a lift, which obviously was forgiven um, because the judges... I think really, honestly, if we're taking everything overall, I guess Amber probably is going to skate better next week than Eddie would have had he gone through, only because Eddie's kind of plateaued over the last few weeks again. But should we be judging on potential or performance? Absolutely, 100% we should be judging on performance, not potential, and not previous skates either. Right. 
So again, a bit controversial because were the rules bent yeah, for this? A little bit. I'm okay with that. I mean, I guess either way, they were both pretty good. They were great. Yeah. It was a great skate off. Great, and it yeah. was a very hard skate off. Odie saved Eddie. Johnny, Jane, and Chris saved Amber. And Johnny made the comment of who would have the most potential to get to the final. Yeah. But what I find interesting That's is all right. Johnny goes home this week anyway. <laughs> Bye. See you, Edward Scissorhands. Again, following on with the conversation of the skate off not looking fair, right? Because a lot of the communication on social media, again, was also Amber didn't skate on her own for this skate off, where Eddie did. Now, what we have to take into consideration is that these skate offs are choreographed prior to show one. Right. And it is the responsibility of the professional to re choreograph it at some point if you feel your celebrity is able to handle a re choreographing session of that skate off. Um, so, what we saw was Eddie. When he started the competition week one, he was much stronger than a lot of the the other couples that are out there. So their skate off was stronger. So it had more solo skating in it. Amber, Amber's skate off was choreographed prior to Christmas before show one. So it reflected the skills that she was bringing to the table at that time. Exactly. And I think that's why if we can hopefully clear up with a lot of you guys at home, that's why... <laughs> You know, the judges in her main performance are like, oh, you, you know, you took our note and you skated a lot more on your own this week. But it wasn't reflected in the skate off because the skate offs are choreographed prior to show one. But she came out and fought for that tonight. And if it wasn't for the stumble at the end, I don't think there would have been as much controversy. Exactly. And unfortunately, we lost Eddie tonight. Well, Eddie went home. Oh, I have again. The teeniest, tiniest little notes that's blowing my head up. That doesn't seem like it's tiny. He didn't get to speak. Now, last week, I was annoyed because the pros didn't get to speak. This week, we didn't even hear from Eddie. Like, who's watching the clock at this point? True. We yeah. ran out of time. Vicky, and Vicky did say a nice piece, which is nice to hear the professional speak, especially at the end of their series, because this is, you know, they, they get getting voted out. But you're right, Eddie didn't get to say anything. He didn't even say bye and thanks or anything. He, he literally was mute. It was unfair that he didn't have chance to explain his journey, to explain how much it had meant to him and his family and his partner. I just thought that was really poor. So I hope we get to hear from Eddie at least on social media. I'm sure they're they're very good with with releasing he's that such, stuff. He's such an icon. He's such a legend. He's such like a British institution. And I feel like what a shame that we didn't get to hear his final parting words. This must have been a very emotional, long, arduous, difficult journey for him. We know that he loved skating. We know that he brought this incredible enthusiasm, passion. And don't forget, he's had some brilliant performances. That Austin Powers one was yeah. literally amazing. You know, I do miss back before they did the reboot six series ago. Now they used to play when you got voted out. They used to play your best bits yes I i'd love to it. see eddie's best bits i always love that and i know the show is tight on time jen and no 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 why well, i said i'd love to see eddie's best bits and jen's lost it in the corner oh <laughs> doing what in the corner losing her religion i don't know <laughs> just giggle chops <laughs> <laughs> but i've missed that part of the show i tell I mean, you i tell you man these tights tv please can we have an extra minute just, An extra 60 seconds so we can see people's best bits. I'd love to see everyone's best bits. Jen? Stop the giggling. <laughs> it's her birthday. We'll forgive her. Let's go back to Magic Mike. All right, next week. Flying. You are dressed perfectly for it. Why? Virgin Airways, <gasps> here you come. What? Wait, 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 wait. Sorry. What do they say when you leave the, when you leave the plane? Goodbye. They Thank say goodbye? <laughs> Okay, what do they say when you get on? Tickets, please. Welcome aboard. Okay, welcome aboard. Okay, let's go. <laughs> Tickets, please. Could you imagine? Right. What are you, from 1954 before security? Clearly. Can I have your ticket, please? Okay, let's take that again. Take that again. No, leave it. It's funny. <laughs> okay. Um, thank you for flying Virgin. You're not a virgin. I mean, ouch. I could be. <laughs> <laughs> um, you're welcome for flying Virgin. Upper class, hopefully. Oh, I hope so. I like to Yes, spend, like, flying, flying is back next week. We're just going to move on. Um, so flying next week. Do you know what I have next week as a little surprise for you if I remember to bring it? And I might not because I've got menopausal brain fog as we spoke about already. However, I have... Wow, that was really fast. <laughs> it was like someone pressed two, two times on the speed. 
<laughs> on the WhatsApp group. <laughs> on the WhatsApp group. I don't have time to listen to this seven minute message hit two times. <laughs> I have a costume from when I actually flew in the show. We're talking vintage retro back in the day. From like. Fly me to the moon. What? Series two? No. Three. Series three? Hmm. Your original costume. Yeah. I'm bringing it in next week. I'm going to put it on Dolly. Oh, my God. So we can get into the flying vibes. And I have to say, we need to give props. As you've noticed, if you watch this this show, um, jump over to Spotify and or YouTube uh, because the videos are up there. But Dolly wears a new costume every week since, what, week or episode three or four of Well, since this. she arrived. She was a little late to the party. Fashionably late. She was late. drunk. <laughs> She has been styled by Stephen Adnett, who was the original costume designer of Dancing on Ice. These pieces, they're literally pieces. I mean, some of them are worth thousands because they, of the stoning they have. They are beautiful. They are stunning. They are breathtaking. I mean, look at that shining over there in the light. I feel like it's such a shame because these costumes sometimes only got to appear for one performance. And literally, that's a minute and a half on the ice yeah. and a little bit of standing while you get voted on or off. Um, so they really are in great mint condition, really. Well, I'm excited to see what you're bringing next week. Yep. You should be. From the archives. From the archives. All right. Don't forget, you guys, on Fridays, we have our bonus episode. This week, we are going to be joined by Duncan James, who is going to bring us back to a little bit of nostalgia, too, like David did last week. Baby Blue, bring it on. And don't forget to join us on our social channels. We're on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, WhatsApp, email. People hit us up. Thank you guys for joining us once again. We will see you next week. Matt Evers here, sat alongside my flight attendant, co-host, Frankie Seaman, or Joan Collins. The oh, the entire cast of Dynasty. You can stop now. <laughs> I'm ready for my close-up. <laughs> we'll see you next week. Produced by Be Inspired Media, the content and podcast agency.